What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Lure Painting over here on Baker Builds. I'm Zach Baker and today we're going to be painting a topwater frog. We carved this frog out of poplar in the last video I posted. I'll have that link down below in case you want to check that out. I also intend to do some fishing with this frog later this week and hopefully get a fishing video filmed. So I'll have that linked below too once, uh, once we get that video made. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and roll the intro and jump right into painting this bait. Prior to painting this frog, I did give it several coats of some clear coat and then did some final hand sanding on it. That way the wood is nice and sealed and ready to go for paint. I'm going to be starting off with a base coat of opaque white using the Createx brand of airbrush paint. And I'm going to go ahead and hit this bad boy with the hair dryer and then do another nice coat of white on it. And then we'll move on to picking out some of our colors. Now we're going to be moving on to an opaque yellow and I plan on just doing this just above where both arms are kind of following down the side. I want to leave the belly mostly white. We're going to definitely go back in later and add some red and maybe a little bit of orange but I want to leave this lower portion of the belly white. So we're going to do that yellow on both sides, carry it up to the top just a little bit because we'll fade it into a green here in our next color but here goes the yellow. And I'm also going to spray it along the back behind that hook. That way the pattern can go all the way around. Next color that we're going to be doing is a pearl lime. Now you can skip this step. Uh, I'm going to do like a darker green along the back. So I kind of want something in between that yellow and the dark green just to help transition since the green will be a lot darker. And I'm going to go ahead and cover the whole back in the screen as well. And then I'm going to hit her with the hair dryer and we'll move on to doing our dark green. For the dark green in the back, we're going to be using an olive green deep and this is an ink. Always make sure it's got the little airbrush symbol on them. I do like using these because they come in some different colors than what the airbrush paints offer, than what my normal Craytex airbrush paints offer. But I'm going to go ahead and take this darker green. I want to do it all the way down the center and then really lightly fade it in. I don't want it to get very dark at all because we're going to be adding some more uh, black spots to it here in a bit. I'm going to hit that with the hair dryer to see what it looks like dry. We may add some more to it. And yes, I am going to darken this up some. Kind of hard to see it on the camera at least for how i'm looking at it right now but we do have that nice transition from the yellow to the darker green i'm going to go ahead and flip this over and we're going to do some of that orange and red on the belly like i was talking about and then after that the rest of it's going to be hand painting which is pretty fun adding all of the details and doing the little dots and stripes but we've got the orange and red that i'm going to be doing and the orange color is actually pearl tangerine I'm going to do just a little bit of that. Like I had mentioned earlier, I want to keep most of this belly white. I just like having an extra color in there between the red and the white. That way it has a nice faded transition. I'm going to do this both at the back and at the front. I'm going to be using a bright red for this. I'm going to be using a bright red transparent for this. It doesn't necessarily have to be transparent. That's just what I have. I wanted the bright red over a darker red, since most of this bait is lighter in color anyway. And I'm wanting to make sure I get the mouth with this, so I'm going to just take that off there for a second. Alrighty, I think this bad boy is ready for our hand painting. So I'm going to clean out my airbrush 
oops, I got, looks like a little bit of red on the front there. That is okay because I was planning on painting some black on there anyways. Before I actually start painting on these other spots, I do want to do some really light speckles on it. So I'm going to be using a paintbrush I got from Harbor Freight that you can pick up a pack of them for like five bucks. I think it's 50 of them. And then I cut it at an angle. That way I can have a nice flicking action on it and it makes the bristles a little bit stiffer. For this, I am going to be using a transparent airbrush paint, uh, transparent black. And I'm using that because it's a lot thinner than the opaque black. That way it'll have some nice speckles. I don't want splatters, I'm just going for speckles. All I'm gonna do, and if you've watched any of my other painting videos, I think I've done a couple with, with this method. So I'm just dipping it in the cap, and I always test it on the table first to make sure they're not gonna be very big. Like I said, I'm trying to go for really small speckles here, not any big ones. Which I think I need a little bit more than that. <laughs> you can always add more. I have not had much luck trying to get paint off of a lure. And I'm going to do the same thing along the back, even though it probably won't show up the best. It'll be there in case it does. Take that back. It shows up very well. <laughs> a little bit more than I was planning on. That is all right. I always like doing the speckles because it's an added little detail. We're gonna be doing some bigger black spots on here, uh, but I just like the way that looks once a clear coat goes on. It kind of adds more depth to the bait in my opinion. But I'm gonna hit this with the hairdryer and I've got a couple different small airbrushes that I'm gonna be working with. The goal is to paint, uh, start off with some white, paint our little blobs and then come back and do some black on top of it. Plus, I want to add in some lines, kind of darken up with the paintbrush around the eyes, just like the frogs do, and same thing along the lip. But we will uh, hit this with a hairdryer and then come back with some opaque white. I think I will just be using some normal acrylic paint. There's no, really no need for me to waste my expensive airbrush paint on this portion. The reference photo I looked at earlier today was for a leopard frog, and I noticed most of them have... Uh, like a white line or stripe going down the side like following following that little ridge right there same thing kind of up along the mouth and then of course there's like the black lines on where the legs would be now I did not do that on my other frogs I've painted before but I've def I'm wanting to give it a try this time so either it'll look good or it'll look bad and you guys will be here to experiment it with me and I'm just gonna be using a cheap bottle of acrylic white paint Walmart has these for about 50 cents, I believe, and I would imagine almost every single craft store would have these as well. Now, since we're doing the white paint on top of these other colors, what I do is I will paint it on there, hit it with the hairdryer, and paint it again. That way we can get a nice crisp white. And this is uh, rather time consuming, so what I'll probably do is just set up a time lapse and then uh, stop it if there's something more important to show you guys. But I'm gonna go in, we're gonna add that line going down the side, and then I'm gonna go around and do some white blobs here and there that we'll later come back in and put some black in over top. There we've got the first coat of the white paint on there. You can see how it isn't covering it all the way. So what I'm gonna do is just, I, I already hit this with the hairdryer. I just wanted to show you that that's what it looks like. And then I'm just gonna go over it again with the paintbrush. But before I do that, while I was painting those on there, I decided that I wanted to put a little bit more green around the eye. Cause I'm gonna be doing some black there too. So I just kinda want to add a little bit more of that green. And it's the same green that we sprayed along the back, which is that olive green deep. I decided to do this because I'm most likely to be putting some yellow eyes on there and I wanted to make sure that the eyes didn't blend in with the yellow we had going down the side. That green around it, plus we're going to be hand painting some black right along the brim of the eye, will definitely help make those yellow eyes that we put in stand out. I'm going to go ahead and do that secondary coat on the white and then we'll come back and start adding on some more black. 
there you can see how the white is more of a solid white rather than transparent. Now I'm going to be doing black over top of it and just leaving the outside edge of the white showing through. That'll make more sense here in a second. What else I would like to do in the future is do yellow spots and then black on top of it. I w if you do plan on doing that, I definitely recommend doing a base coat of white first. That way it'll make your yellow uh, be more of the actual shade of yellow it is. If you just did yellow straight over top of that green, it would never be very bright. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the first one. I'll show you guys what it looks like and then I will get the rest of them done and then we'll come back in and start adding some more details. So that is the idea. I'll probably have to do the same thing like do with the white and do a little touch up or double coat on some spots. I'm gonna try to get it a little bit thinner than that. Uh, it's kind of hard to do it when, with the camera in between me and it, it's a lot easier when it's up close and personal to you. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all of these and I'm gonna move the camera off to the side. That way you guys can still see what's going on but I can get a closer look at it. there we go we've got the black over top the white I am really digging that white stripe down the side but it proved to be very challenging for my shaky hands you definitely don't want me as your surgeon so if I can perfect that I think that would definitely look cool I also added a little bit more white or kind of carried that line down the side right there a little bit now we're gonna go in and darken up with the paintbrush just kind of paint around the eyes maybe add a little points and then go in on these legs I noticed most of the frog pictures I saw they all had these little stripes on their legs. So we got one leg up front here. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, but this is a leg back here too. So we'll add some stripes in there. And then I will probably do a couple small black dots going down the side. And then she is almost ready for clear coat. Okay, so we got all of the black painted on, and something else that I did, I'm gonna get this a little bit closer so you guys can see, is I painted the inside of the eye socket. That way when the eye is sitting down in there, there's none of that yellow or that green showing through. It'll be a solid black. I don't usually worry about that with my plastic baits because it's a shallow enough eye socket that we don't have to worry about it, but this one's a lot deeper. And I know I had said I was gonna do yellow eyes, but then I remembered while I was painting this that we have these black legs that were <laughs> these red legs that we're putting in so I've got these dragon eyes that are they're kind of like an orangish red but red with some yellow in there so that's what I'm going to use and I'll have a link down below to Amazon where you can pick up these eyes they're called dragon eyes and they're glass now I don't like using these glass eyes on my plastic baits because they stick off so far I'm concerned that as soon as they had hit a rock it would knock them off but they look absolutely killer in the wood baits so we're going to go ahead and get these glued in and then I'm going to give this bad boy a light clear coat with the Rust-Oleum Semi-Gloss Clear. And then we will be putting on the logo and some clear coat. And then I will talk to you guys again once she's dry and ready to see what she looks like. the frog all clear coated up and then I just used some two-part epoxy to glue in the little feet for it super happy with the way it turned out and I definitely like the way the speckles look over having no speckles so I'm glad we did that along with the white and black stripes going down the side 
As I said at the beginning of the video, if you guys want to build your own frog like this, I have a free download on my website. I'll have the website linked below, and I also have the video of me carving the baits. So that way you can check out how to do that. I'm going to hopefully, if weather plays in my favor, do some fishing later this week, and we'll get that other video posted. If you guys have any ideas or certain types of baits that you guys would like patterns for, or if you want to see some more frog painting videos, make sure to make sure to comment below. That way I'll know what you guys are wanting to see. Thank you guys once again so much for watching, and I will catch you later.